All right, so both of these are um, permissible arrows. Usually, though, we would want to move in small steps so that we don't miss any resonance structures. Mm -hmm. uh, in any case, that's going to be important when we're working with benzene, because benzene, we're trying to draw all the resonance structures yeah. oftentimes. OK. Um, so let's go back to work here. So we need to draw um, all the resonance structures here. So I think at first when you guys were working on this, one thing that you were thinking about doing was this. Now is this arrow going to work for us? No. Why not? Well, we're forming a pi bond, but we're not forming a pi bond with a carbocation, and there's no way this can lose, and there's no way this atom can lose a pi bond because it doesn't have any pi bonds. So there's no way that this arrow is ever going to work for us. Notice that what we tried to do is I tried to give you a way of showing this won't work that doesn't involve actually counting the pot, counting the electrons. That would take too long if we have to count the electrons every time to see if we're exceeding an octet. We know this is not going to work because it doesn't fall into either of these categories. Um, so we don't need to check anything else about it. Okay. Now how about say this? Would this arrow on its own be a good arrow? There's no reason to do this. Now we're forming a lone pair, but we have neither of these reasons for forming a lone pair. So by itself, that wouldn't work. OK, so can anyone think of a, 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 an arrow that we can put in here? We can do this. That's right. Um, OK. I'm sorry? We have to make room for it. And we've got to make room. And let's make room in the smallest possible step possible so we're not missing any resonance structures. All right, so these, this is a legal arrow, and this is a significant arrow. All right, now the next step is to draw the resonance structure that we get from these arrows. Now, this is something that you and I have worked together a lot. I've emphasized to you a lot that once you have the arrows, it should be child's play to draw the right picture. Unfortunately, oftentimes it's not, but if we obey the arrows, the arrows will tell us exactly what this picture should look like. So let's take our time and draw this picture based on these arrows. Let's make sure we get that right. some goodness in it. It's got some problems, though. Where? So. Oh, because I forgot the charge on the That's right. Isn't that important? Yes. yes, that's the most important thing. OK. So um, I think we've talked about how do we interpret arrows. Well, first of all, the arrows tell us which bonds to form, which bonds to break. Is this telling us to form a bond or break a bond? Yeah, it's telling us to form this bond. Is this telling us to form a bond or break a bond, or both? Yeah, it's telling us to break a bond. Yeah. So now this is only a sigma bond. All right, you got that part right. Uh, and of course, these bonds should be unchanged. This is very important. If there's no arrow on a bond, it's not changing. We only make the changes the arrows tell us to. But the most important thing now is to change the charges. And which charges do we change at the initial tail and the final head? So how many charges are we going to change? We're always going to change exactly two charges, at the initial tail and at the final head. Um, do you see why I would call this the initial tail? This is the initial tail. Uh, by the way, do you know what I mean by head and tail? Is this the head or the tail of an arrow? Maybe that's not clear. This would be considered the tail of an arrow, and this would be considered the head of an arrow. So I'm going to use those terms a lot, so it's important to be clear about this. Now, this is not the initial tail, because it's in the middle of the string of arrows. I would call this the initial tail, because it's at the beginning of the arrow. So this is the initial tail. All right, now, this octogen started neutral, and it's losing electrons. So its charge must now be positive. All right, and the point I want to make is that it should really be child's play to get this charge right. We don't need to count the lone pairs or figure out formal charges on this oxygen. The arrow tells us what the charge is going to be. We started neutral, and we're losing electrons. So this must be positive. It's a waste of time to actually count the electrons and make sure that the formal charge is positive. You don't have time to do that on every problem. Yeah. All right. In fact, on most problems, we wouldn't even have drawn this lone pair. We only draw the lone pair that's participating in the resonance. Um, and that would make it even harder to see what this is the right formal charge. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, now we also change the charge at the final head. Do you see why this is not the final head? Because it's in the middle. This is the final head. Now, what charge did this start with? It started neutral. And is it gaining or losing electrons? So it should end up with a negative charge. And again, it should be uh, very straightforward to determine this charge. We don't actually have to count the lone pairs and use general chemistry skills to figure this out. In fact, I'm not even going to draw the lone pair on this carbon. Because it's conventional, it's conventional not to draw lone pairs if they're represented by charges. The only reason to draw all the lone pairs, even on the like. Oh, maybe your instructor wants you to. Okay, all right. Maybe your instructor wants you to draw the lone pairs. It depends on the problem. Oh yeah. He but what about if the problem wasn't specifically talking about lone pairs? Yeah. You wouldn't normally draw them uh, if they're represented by a charge. The only lone pair that you have to draw, I have to draw this lone pair because otherwise I would have no place to put the tail of this arrow, right? You can't just put the tail of an arrow directly on an atom. It has to be, the tail either has to be on a negative charge or a lone pair. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I said before that the arrow should make it straightforward to get the right picture. For each arrow you ask, what bonds am I forming and or what bonds am I breaking? And every single structure you have to change two charges at the initial tail and the final head. And that is by far the most important part of the whole picture to get the charges right. Okay. Um, so, and also we should always check to make sure that our net charges balance. What was the net charge on this picture? Zero. And what is the net charge on this picture? Zero. Negative one plus one. You should always check that the net charge is balanced. If they don't balance, you know you've made a mistake in interpreting the arrows. So this is just a double check. All right. Very well. Now then, um, let's try to draw another resonance structure based on this picture. So let's try to put in one or two electron pushing arrows that would allow us to get another legal and significant resonance structure. Oh yeah, you already went ahead and do that. That's good. Completely good this time? I think so. Um, I changed that completely. Charge charge. Excellent, yeah, that is complete. Now you should be drawing the arrow in this picture. Okay. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that we're going to be moving these electrons. These are the unhappy electrons, right? We want to spread out this charge. Um, now, one thing we would not do is this, because this would be a lone pair to lone pair transition, and we know we never make lone pair to lone pair transitions. Um, also, how about doing this? Well, you could kind of do that, but that would just be reversing what we already did. Yeah. There would be no point just reversing what we already did. We want to keep moving in the, in the direction that we were moving at first. So we can move this way. Now, is this arrow acceptable by itself? Yeah. No, because when we're forming a pi bond, we need to make room. And how can we make room? We could make room by doing this uh, if we put in some more electrons. But let's make the smallest possible step and do this so that we're not missing any um, cases. And that's what you drew. Now we need to obey the arrows and draw the new picture that comes from that. Good. Remember, don't make any changes to this pi bond because there's no arrows going to this pi bond right now. Here we're forming a pi bond. Here we're breaking a pi bond. This is at the initial tail. It started negative and it's losing electrons, so it becomes neutral. Here's the final head. It started neutral and it's gaining electrons, so it becomes negative. Um, I'm not, um, this actually represents a lone pair. Maybe your instructor would make you draw the lone pair, but I'm not going to do that because uh, I just find it confusing. But this represents a lone pair. Um, what's the net charge on this picture? Zero. Which matches what we started with, so that's good. Okay, are there any other resonance structures? No, because they're just the same if you uh, that, that's a, an interesting point. There, there's a sense in which they're the same, but for purposes of resonance structures, this is a different carbon than this one over here. Yeah. So you still do it? Yeah, we still do it. Okay. I can see why that's confusing, because if we were thinking about isomers, we wouldn't bother drawing those two things. But for purposes of resonance, we do draw both pictures. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw that.
good. This by itself doesn't work. We've got to make room for this pi bond. Well, let's make a small step and do this. All right, I think this is what both of you got. All right, so very good. 